I used to be a strong believer in Christ. But then I fell in love with Miro. And everything I believed and stood for fell with it. How can you say that? I completely let down my guard. How? And every principle I stood on. How did you let down your guard? Since we started sleeping together, I have lost my peace. Why? Because of some stupid dreams. Hello everybody, my name is Tolu Lokwe Maiba Miloye. I am a drama minister, I'm a nutritionist, dietitian, I'm a wife, I'm a mother. Um, <laughs> what is, I'm a child of God. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Welcome to Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. That's the toys, toys behind, behind the, the movies. movies. This is Beyond Entertainment. And this is Beyond Entertainment. I'm one of the co-hosts of Truth Talk with Ted, an online talk show. So if you haven't been watching it, this is your chance to, you know, go and check it out on YouTube. Um, so True Talk with Ted, you can find True Talk with Ted episodes on Damilola Mike Bamiloye's YouTube chan channel. This is Beyond Entertainment! Woohoo! Keep, keep, keep watching, watching Beyond Entertainment show with PBO! Nutrition and living healthy basically has a huge role to play in us fulfilling purpose because our body is the vehicle of purpose that God has given us to do the work and the assignment he has given us to do on this earth. And one of the ways in which we take care of our bodies is by eating right, eating healthy, because I mean, it's just like when you buy fuel into your car, you don't buy adulterated or bad fuel into the car and expect the car to function effectively over time. That's the same thing with our health. The food we eat is like fuel to our body. So the more you feed yourself properly and take care of your health, the better your body will serve you. And also, the Bible said that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that means our body is is a temple. And how do you treat a temple? It's some something that is, you know, holy and important so you don't just you don't treat a temple anyhow you don't throw um junk into it you don't treat it anyhow you treat it with you know you treat it right so yeah remember that your body is a temple of the holy spirit and it, it is to be treated right that is through eating healthy meals like i said i'm a dietitian nutritionist so i'm very aware of the effect of excess weight gain on someone's health Health, um, excess weight gain is a risk factor to a lot of other diseases and when you're when your weight is you know higher than normal because the truth is everybody has an ideal weight that is um good for their height and for their age so when you're when you're above that weight you can start to experience certain symptoms from loss of energy to breath breathlessness and several other things. And it increases your risk of having certain diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes, and many other, and many other. So <laughs> like you said, I recently, you know, went through a journey of weight loss and I did that because I knew that was the best thing for my health at this point. I, I knew I needed to, you know, lose some weight. I couldn't continue going <laughs> in that path that I was going. And to be honest, it wasn't an easy journey because I didn't gain all the weight in one day. I mean, ugh, there was the whole pregnancy period and then breastfeeding and all that. So it's, it didn't happen in a day. So I didn't expect it to just, I didn't expect the weight to go all in one day it took time it was a process so and when it comes to losing weight it is both the diet and exercise that does the work a lot of people believe that just by exercising they would lose the weight but it's not possible to to actually achieve tangible weight loss if you're eating as much as you want and thinking you're going to exercise it away no if your goal is to achieve weight loss then you need to ensure you have a calorie deficit in the sense that what, what you're eating is less than what you're using. The energy you're taking in is less than the energy you are letting out. So when you're trying to lose weight, you're ensuring that you're, you're you know, being cautious of what you're eating 
the that is a portion size, the quantity and the type of food you're eating. And then you're also increasing your physical activity. So that's where exercise comes in. Because normally most of us, we spend our whole day, like a lot of people sit down most of the day, sit down or lie down. Or if they walk, maybe just maybe a few thousand steps in a day. So now increasing, exercising regularly, increasing your output, your energy output also helps to achieve the calorie deficit and the weight loss. And aside from losing weight, exercise also, you know, helps to stay fit. It helps to um, tone your body for people that are trying to lose weight. Exercise helps in toning your body. And it also just helps with general healthy living, helps your heart function more effectively it, it boosts your mood so there are a lot of benefits to exercising and i know that especially for we nigerians <laughs> exercising is not part of what we like or do regularly <laughs> so it takes intentionality it takes being intentional having a, a goal and then planning towards achieving that goal because you don't just if you just plan it in your head, you may not do it. And then one other thing that helps with being consistent in exercise is having an accountability partner. So for me, I had my husband join me. So it was it made it way easier for me. So if there's somebody, maybe your daughter, your, your son, your husband, your friend, or somebody else that is on the same journey as you can, you know, join you and it would make it easier for you because you have someone you're accountable to. But the diet is also important. So with that one, you can always see a dietitian, nutritionist to help you in achieving this. And this is beyond entertainment. If you're in a relationship with someone and you see that the person is already going astray, it's okay to detach yourself and be praying from the person from my fans say god please restore this person because it will be hard for you to stay in that relationship and try and you know restore the person back it's, it's going to be hard so just take a break move away and then i think another thing is and your lad didn't couldn't um go she should have gone to his parents <laughs> a lot of should have what she should have done <laughs> it's good to have people that you guys are your relationship is accountable to i used to be a strong believer in christ but then I fell in love with Miro and everything I believed and stood for fell with it. How can you say that? I completely let down my guard. How? And every principle I stood on. How did you let down your guard? Since we started sleeping together, I have lost my peace. Why? Because of some stupid dreams. I think one thing Enyola also lacked was she didn't have a spiritual leader or mentor that she could go to. Maybe she saw Gwenro as that and Gwenro really it, it did a, a bad job <laughs> in living up to that role. So I think she didn't have somebody like that, that in times when she, God was trying to speak to her and, you know, giving her hints of you need to come back to me. She didn't have anybody to go and talk to, to help her, you know, see things from the light of Christ. So it's also important to have spiritual leaders or spiritual, you know, mentors that you can go to in times when you're confused or you don't know what to do and you know something is wrong because definitely she knew something was wrong, but she couldn't place her finger on it and she didn't, she couldn't help herself out of it. So yeah, that, that part moved me. That, 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 that was like her last chance. She had a dream. That was like your wake up call to just detach from everything and go and pray and seek God, but you still chose to stay. Where is my daughter? Ah, my what happened to her? <laughs> How did she die? Ah, I love her. I, I love her. Have killed her. Please tell me. How did she die? I don't How know. did she die? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't understand. I don't, you know. don't understand. Ah. But she is dead. <laughs> tell me. I will deal with you. Ah. I will tear you into pieces. Ah. I will tear you into pieces. Ah. Where is my daughter? Ah. Oh. Dad! I will no. deal with you, Gilda. Yes, but she's dead. She's dead. How? I will tear you into pieces. Give me back. I will tear you into pieces. Give me back. In your hands? Where is my daughter? Dad, I'm not dead. I'm here. You are dealing with the wrong party. Why did he do this? This is. But I thought it's right, you know. Why did you keep. What's going on? I'm here! 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 I'm here!
And we see from their story that they were very close to getting married. It was like the wedding was a few weeks away. It's just an encouragement to someone out there. It doesn't matter. A broken relationship is better than a broken marriage or a a broken life. <laughs> so it's better, even if your wedding is very close by, but you know that something is not right. You know that things need to be put right with God. Please don't be afraid to take that break, to take that step and say, you know what? I need to go and retrace my steps and get it right with God. Please. Man, run, no, because I am not living right. We are not living right. Okay, honey, do you care to explain? Oh, God. Meru? Yeah. Are we married? No, we are not. Oh, we are not, right? Yeah. Okay. So why on earth are we sleeping together? Why are we doing this? Because we love ourselves and we are getting married soon. Ah. <sighs> Whoever breaks the edge, the serpent will bite. Have you read that in the Bible? Yeah, so what? We have broken the edge of protection. Miro, we have broken it so many times. So many times. I mean, everybody's favorite would be Baba Gbero. <laughs> everybody's favorite would be Baba Gbero. And yes, to be honest, I've enjoyed watching Avatar from beginning up, up until this moment. And there are a lot of lessons. Um, the power of forgiveness the um the importance of having spiritual covering over you somebody that is there to intercede on your behalf somebody that is you know as you know determined that no matter what you're not going to fail you're not going to miss the road on my own account like the way baba Baron was there for martins <laughs> he was and the funny thing he was not even his biological father he was not his biological father but he took that mission of being a spiritual father to Martins, he took it really personal. And it, and I mean, we've seen Martins, if not for Babak Baro, to be honest, Martins would have died since, I don't know, <laughs> maybe season one. <laughs> the devil would have ended him because he had a lot of, you know, forces against him, but he made it. So yeah, Babak Baro would be one of my favorite. Um, Dad. Yes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Martins. Yes. Martins. Yeah, yes. Welcome. Yeah. I want to request that Chief Sanya bless the food. Wow. Oh. Me? Oh. Yes. <laughs> it was great. Another would be Flora. I mean, everybody's favorite. <laughs> Flora is also a very good, a, she was, her character was so, so amazing. Somebody that, you know, came from the streets, a sense of humor was so good. And we see how God can transform lives. We see in this episode, in this new season that, I mean, she's married and she has twins, twins, she has children. Somebody that was coming from, I'm sure when she was, you know, working as a prostitute, she never saw a bright future ahead of her, but we see how God just transformed and changed her story. So it just goes to say that there's no story God cannot rewrite. There's no bad or evil that you think you've done that God cannot, you know, have mercy and bring you, draw you close to himself. This is Beyond Entertainment. Woohoo! Keep, keep, keep watching, watching Beyond Entertainment show with PBO. The scriptwriter and the director of Abattoir, of course, is my brother, Davlola Mike Bamiloye. And to be honest, I, I watch the movies or I read the script and I'm like, how? How did you <laughs> how did you come up with this? And the truth is, when he was writing um, season one, he obviously did not know what would happen in season three, season four, and I mean the other seasons. So it just shows that the script is definitely inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I mean, we've seen a lot of, you know, season movies out there. And by the time you're watching season one, season two, three, you're like, nah, I think season one was my best. But for Abattoir, I would say it, it keeps getting better with each season that comes. It keeps getting better. We want to know what's going to happen next. So 
it is definitely obvious that uh, evangelist Damlala received inspiration from the Holy Spirit to write this script. He he definitely, you know, prays <laughs> and allows the Holy Spirit to flood his mind with ideas on what to put down because this Abattoir movie could have only been by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And I mean, being directed or said by him was, it was really good. It was very, you know, very cool, calm and collected. If, if maybe um, there's a scene, he wanted me to do it in a different way. He would say it in a nice way. After we've shot the first take, he'd be like, okay, that was very good. That was good. Okay. Can we just add this? Can we do it like this? Can we do it like that? So <clears throat> it was really good being, being on set with him. I mean, he directing the, the scenes, the movie, it was, it was really good. Anyway, I think you need to make out time for yourself. Yeah. I mean, give yourself a treat. See, I wish I can. I wish I can. But look, this, this is the only parents I have. My mother is dead. I don't have a brother. I don't have a sister. I have nobody. My things. You have me. I have who? I don't know. I, you, I mean, what, what, I want... You have us. Yes, I have you guys. That's the most important thing. And I really appreciate you guys. Eh? Thank you for checking up on me. All right, take care of yourself. Eh? You're gonna have a great day. Okay. Yeah, bye. Honestly, this guy needs help. Uh... He needs help. <laughs> Honestly, so like maybe last month or some weeks ago, I was still thinking about this. I was like, God, you know me, my normal self as I was growing up. All I wanted was a quiet life. I didn't want any attention or any attention. I just, if I could just go and live in an island, I'd be, of course, there'll be people there, not without people, but just do my thing. Nobody knows my name, but I'm making the impact God wants me to make. I didn't want anything that would push me out and everybody would, oh, that's... <laughs> so yes, like I was saying, so some days ago, I was, I was still thinking about it and I'm like, wow, God. If somebody had told me, um, told my maybe 18 year old self that I will be where I am today and doing what I'm doing today, I would have laughed and said, nah, you're joking. <laughs> I'd have said, no, no, no. I probably would have, if God told me this, maybe I would have run away. <laughs> because personally, I just like to, you know, my space, be by myself, do what I need to do, impact lives in, you know, a quiet, like be in the background, basically. Do what you're doing in the background. Nobody needs to know who did what or who didn't do what. Just let the work keep, you know, keep going. But then I find myself <laughs> in a family of evangelists, drama ministers. And I mean, so your face has to be there one way or the other because you're, you're in a movie, you're in a show or something. And I mean, before I got married, of course, I didn't really used to get people see me and then I'm like, ah, it's all over. I didn't used to get that before I got married. But then I got married and there was even one time I went to a supermarket and I didn't know that the person behind me knew me. You know those days that you just want to be, you don't want anybody to see you where you are. <laughs> so I was in the supermarket and then the person just go, ah, and she told me, my family, please move forward, ma. In my mind, I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, and you don't know who, who knows you or who doesn't know you, who's looking at you or not looking at you. So to be honest, it can be a lot. That's the truth. It can be a lot, but I just thank God for the grace because I don't consider myself as being famous because everything I do is not in my power. It is not by my power and I don't do it for the attention or the fame. It is God. I constantly remind myself that whatever I'm doing today and wherever I am today, it is by the grace of God. It is God. <clears throat> I point people out. It is God. So even when people are saying, oh, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. We love you. I'm like, oh, we thank God. We thank God. Because I know that without God, I can't do any of this. My sole purpose and goal is just to please God and do the will of God to work in the purpose that God has called me into. And I constantly remind myself of, of that because as human beings, the truth is sometimes we can allow the praises and the attention get into our head and you start feeling ah, ah i've arrived i know but i always remind myself that this everything i'm doing it is not me god you take 
the stage let me be in the background it's it's all for your glory it is for your glory and i mean that's what god wants god wants us to constantly be usable in his hands he wants us to constantly stay childless is if we, the lighter we are the easier god can carry us so if we become if we become proud we become heavy and god resists the proud so when we allow fame to get to us that means proud is pride sorry is already setting in so I constantly remind myself that it is all God. And I mean, when people see me and they're like, I told you, I'm, even if I'm not in a good mood or I don't want to see anybody at that time, I always put on a smile because I know that <laughs> these people are just, it's is the work that God is using me for that they're seeing, not me myself. And I don't want to, I'm, I'm an ambassador for Christ. So I don't want to misrepresent Christ. So even as they're seeing me, I want to emulate the, you know, I want to ooze out christ likeness i don't want to i don't want to lash out and say oh my god i don't i don't want i don't want any attention right now so i try as much no matter how i'm feeling or what's how my day is going i put on a smile and say oh thank you so much it's so nice to meet you thank god for all he's doing so yes my parents my amazing loving wonderful best parents ever <laughs> My mom and dad, I think one important thing that they did for me and my siblings was making us know God, introducing us to God. My parents, right from when we, are, we were small, as little as I can remember, my mom and dad would always tell us, especially my dad, who say, see, all of us who are children of God. I am a son of God. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. God does not have grandchildren. So we are all children of God and I am just your caretaker on this earth. So if you need anything, if you're going through anything, you can always go to your father <clears throat> who is God. Because even me as I am, if I, if I need anything, if anything is wrong with me, I go to God. So he made that, he, he gave us, he made us understand that. And I can say that that's one of the best things they ever did for us. They made us know Christ and to understand. I mean, there'll be and it was practicalized. Who they were outside is who they were inside. They had that integrity because you know some you you talk to some pastors' children and they're like, what their parents do in the house is different from what they do outside. But my parents were as they were inside is how they were outside, and they they exemplified it. Let me put it that way. So for example, there'll be times in the house maybe when there was no food, my dad would take us to the store. Oh yeah, let us go and pray. God, bring this, bring rice, bring yam, bring bread, bring this. He says, say everything you want. Just tell God so that He will provide it either by sending the money or the provisions so like i said they will call oh come and call this forth as, as children something that you should be sad there's no food in the house well, what are we going to eat you'll be there in the store lord we receive our bread we receive our rice i will be laughing and dancing and from just doing that we see god providing maybe somebody will just come and knock and bring the food what we just prayed for so you, I, as a child you see that happen and you're like ah definitely I need to serve this God. This God that my parents are preaching is who he says he is. It's not, it's not a situation of they're saying something else and we are seeing something else. It's we're seeing this and we're saying this. So yes, I'll say that. They showed us the way to Christ and they were who they said they were. They were, they were people of integrity and there was so much love. They, they 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 brought us up with so much love and they were they were disciplinarians let me put it that way <laughs> they were disciplinarians <laughs> my mom especially no nonsense <laughs> once you give you that eye you know that oh my god <laughs> so yes they were disciplinarians they made i remember there's one example i can never forget so my brother and i we went for i think it was midweek service <clears throat> And it was offering time. So we didn't have offering and we didn't go and ask her. So I, I don't know how my mommy saw us because we, we were sitting at the back. So we just, we fold our hands and drop. There was nothing in our hand. We just drop it in the offering basket. Just drop it in the offering basket. When we now got home, she said, did you people have offering? She said, no, no. So why did, why are you now uh, pretending as if there was offering in your hand and putting your hand in the offering? She now she sat us down and explained to us how that is bad. Is you know, trying to impress. If you don't have... It's God understands that you don't have anything. Don't be like, she gave, she used Bible characters. I think she used ba the children of, um, <laughs> I can't remember, those children that said, she said, I used plenty exam Bible examples, corrected us. And then, okay. So we're like, okay. So from that time, even up to now, if empty envelope, I can't put it inside. I'd rather leave it on my seat. 
one thing important thing my dad did that i really appreciated is when he disciplined us after he has maybe beat us spanked us corrected us after we have cried that you're okay he will now call us back and then he will explain why he did what he did and the lesson we ought we ought to take from it so it was not just beating out of frustration or beat and say get out of my side he will explain why he beat us and the lesson we need to learn and then he will apologize for hurting our feelings and then he will tell us to also apologize so 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 that was i mean there was so much I, we could sense the genuine love they had for us and they had you know good intentions so yes like i said my parents are best parents ever and i'm so grateful to god that i grew up under them and god gave them to me and my siblings as gifts to raise us in this world Modern entertainment Beyond the applause of men We seek for something valuable And that is the soul of man yeah. And that is the soul of man Men and so that forget And this is beyond entertainment And this is beyond entertainment Beyond entertainment Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO